Greetings Mary Meat folks, Symbian here. This video is going to be on something very special. A what I would classify as a secret in witchcraft and spellcraft to manifesting. And there's two lessons here. The first lesson is know yourself. Know all of your limitations. Know all of your strengths. Know all of your weaknesses. Know all of the resistance between you and any potential target when you do spell work or incantations or invocations. Uh, when you even when you call the quarters, call the corners, east, south, west, and north. Know yourself. Know what you are capable of and know what your limitations and uh, weaknesses and uh, restrictions are. But it is a given that you should know yourself so well that it becomes automatic pilot when you do spells, incantations, invocations, uh, evoking the quarters, uh, calling the quarters, drawing down the sun or the moon. Know yourself. Now, when you compose a ritual or a spell or an incantation, knowing yourself is prime, very important. Knowing yourself for a ritual or incantation or any spell work means that your intent that you focus on and that you give the spell is laser clean, sharp, has the most clarity it could ever contain. Now, when you do a spell and ritual, uh, or a blessing or a curse, uh, any sort of uh, invocation or incantation, you know yourself how strong the energy needs to be. Now, even that said, when many of us do spells and rituals and incantations, uh, I'll give you an example for calling the quarters. We'll start at East. I'll give you an example of it East. Now, I've seen witches do this. Hail the guardians and the watchtowers of the East, the power of air and intention. Guard our circle and keep us safe during our spell casting or craft ritual. Now, Overall, there's nothing wrong with that, but even invoking the quarters, these are ancient deities that uh, have, for whatever reason, been assigned to the four cardinal points, east, south, west, and north, and they have adopted and evolved within their element. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to speak your truth. That's the second lesson. Know your own truth for this ritual so well that there is virtually no resistance, nothing stopping the intent and the power you raise from getting to its target. Now, there is something about knowing the truth of your ritual that you're doing and the connection you have with your target. Excuse me for a second, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I love Tim Hortons. Shameless plug. Ah. <laughs> All right. When you, do, when you do spells, incantations, any sort of a recitation that connects with the target, you have to know your own personal truths and know, knowing yourself, your own limitations and your own strengths, uh, uh, what you excel in. And for a ritual, you use only what you excel in. Uh, you bypass, or not bypass, but you circumvent your own weaknesses. The trick to getting a connection with your target is raising enough acute, uh, uh, almost pure energy to the extent with an intent 
that it reaches its target and affects the target. But also, when you know about your truths, knowing your truth, you have to take into consideration that anything that you send out, and when it connects to its target, it is going to cascade down from that target to everything that's related to that target right down to the atomic level. It's going to modify and change everything, including you, because you have made a connection with that target. So the ripples and the effects of the spell work or the curse or the blessing or the incantation or invocation uh, that you target out and the power that you raise and the intent that you give it has to be so laser clear that there is no resistance between you, your thought form that you send out with your spell work and your, your ritual work and the target. No resistance. Zero resistance. It goes like a laser cannon shot directly to its target. And it affects the target. And in your mind, you need to be able to see how what you have just done or what you are going to do will change your target. It'll modify uh, uh, how your target perceives things. It will modify the people around your target that are connected to the target. It will change them in subtle ways. When you do this type of magic, uh, uh, using the, the secret of manifestation, it will be so profound that for weeks afterwards, you will have a sense and a feeling and know that something has shifted slightly. It's you that caused the shift. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but to know that your magic works, you will also feel a shift of when it happens. And as I said, you have connected to that target to do your spell work or that goal, and that goal will now be affected by your spell work, by your incantations and whatever. And the ripples that come away from that change will come back and affect you in some way. It'll change you slightly. It'll modify you slightly. That's one of the reasons why witches are very careful with the words they choose and who they target. They have to be. Uh, uh, a slight error can sometimes be fatal and have repercussions that will come back to you and uh, affect you profoundly. And there's no way of circumventing that. There's no way of breaking that. When you make a connection with your target, you have the clarity and power uh, and purpose and intent that is so strong that you know your magic will work. And knowing that, you also know how what you have just done is going to affect you on different levels. It changes you slightly. It modifies the way you perceive things and how you work. It can add to you or it can actually take away from you. That's what they call the cost of doing a blessing or a curse or any sort of a spell that connects with somebody in a proper way. There's a price to pay. And that price is how you have mo been modified and changed by how you've conducted this ritual. You have to know in your mind that the ritual, in the ritual, that the effect has taken place, and how it has affected the target and everything around the target. As I said, right down to an atomic level. It's that profound. Now, this is not a caution as to uh, be careful what you wish for or, or uh, better think twice before you, you do a curse or blessing, which is a normal caution. But when you do something like this, words have power. They are extremely powerful. Uh, if a friend or a troll is bothering you, uh, in real life and you tell them to fuck off and go away that they're a worthless piece of shit and they, they should not have even been born. When you tell somebody that, 
uh, from a witchcraft perspective, that's somewhat of a banishment or a curse. And it will affect them, whether they take it to heart or not. It changes the energies around them. It also changes how they interact with the energies around them. Whether they believe you or not, you have just changed and modified that person. And probably the people that are connected with that person. The person will act differently, uh, maybe even subconsciously. And the friends and uh, friends of friends will be slightly changed because of how they now react to a changed target. You see where I'm going with this? Magic is profound. It's deep and very, very powerful. If you know your own truth and know the truth of your spell or ritual work and know yourself, your, man your magic will manifest every single time. Every time. Uh, uh, limitless. Without, without blockage, without resistance. Like a laser hitting a target. Uh, and the amount of intent and power you put behind it is relative to how much the target will be changed and how much everything around the target, including yourself, will change. That's how powerful magic can be. But you've got to know your truth. Know yourself. And know the truth of what you're going to do. If you... Uh, don't speak with conviction or don't speak with the proper intent. Your thought form uh, uh, in your incantation or your spell work is going to float around and either die on its own, but it will never connect with its target if you don't have uh, the power behind it and the knowledge that there is no restriction, there is no resistance. Uh, uh, there is nothing stopping your thought form from connecting with your target. Magic, uh, uh, when you do ritual and spell work, magic has to be that profound, that deep, that moving, that lucid. It has to blow away any resistance around the target, between you and the target, between the target and their friends. Uh, uh, as I said, right down to an atomic level, uh, affecting nature around the target, the elements around the target, how the target perceives everything, your magic will shift all of that. And as I said, the effects will ripple down and cascade down back to you to some degree, but also to everything connected with the target. That's how powerful magic is. And that is the power that you have in your hands. When you cast a spell or do an incantation, or invoke the spirits, you are manifesting something so deep, so powerful, and so old that nothing will stop the result, the outcome. And if you can envision that outcome with such clarity, such lucidity, that it becomes real for you, that's when you do the ritual, that's when you do your magic. That is the secret of manifestation. I'm Symbian. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, uh, uh, like, comment down below, and we'll see you next time. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Blessed be.